We did the interim title because when you do the interim, the interim then fights the champion. Mm -hmm. Well, Colby isn't ready to fight the champion, so, you know, much like what happened in the fight with, uh, you know, Khabib and them, when the first punch was thrown, Connor was then stripped from the title. So Same wait, thing will happen. And GSP. Okay. Same thing happened with GSP and now Colby. What do you mean he's not ready to fight the champ? He's hurt or he's mentally not ready? Yeah, he just had some type of surgery oh, okay. on his nose. He did some type of, you know, he, he, I guess he had problems breathing. Okay. He had, he had bad sinus problems. Sure. So it's something that he, you know, decided to take care of. It, it wasn't a surgery that had to be done. It wasn't a net like he fucking tore his labrum or, you know, torn bicep or something like that or, or ACL. It was it was a surgery that, um, it was an elective surgery that, that he decided he wanted to have now. See, exactly. see you're saying he just took some tuna fed and shoved his interim belt, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, no, you, you know, he, he could have waited to do that surgery and he could have fought Woodley. So would you say it's fake news that uh, you're going to be stripped of the title on September 8th once the first punch is thrown? Absolutely, that's 100 percent fake news. They ain't stripping anything. That came this from that came belt. from your boss, Dana White. He said it himself. He did say it himself. He said he's next. You know, they they understand. They feel for me my situation. I just fought, and then I had to get a sinoplasty surgery, a serious issue that I've been dealing with for eight, eight months a year. So this is public knowledge. You know, you can go to the doctors like. You can go to USADA, like, I had a serious thing I had to deal with so I can get back to 100%. I know I have no one that fights 100%, but I need to get to at least 90% before I fight my next fight and defend my title. When you stood in front of him and you did the, and you landed the one, did you just, it was, it was I listen, whenever you were hurting somebody, you kind of put yourself to possibly get hurt. But what, is that something you just planned on to stay right? there in the thick of it and, and just not go punch for punch because he wasn't landing back but did you plan on countering like that like like that his hand was going to drop or? yeah man so I, I did a lot of boxing this camp i worked a lot of boxing with hoel diaz out of tindio with cub swanson i was at the Lomachenko's camp working on boxing as well too um i knew cody had that opening with his left hand every time he throws a right he puts his left hand in his pocket so i was i wasn't really planning on trying to counter right to right because I knew he threw he threw the short and the longer I was gonna I was gonna do that. I would have planned on throwing three in a row. Um and then it stopped the tip a little bit. You know, I took the first one, it landed a little bit long towards like the, the behind his head a little bit. And he just kinda kept coming forward as I like every time I threw it I kinda loaded it back up just a little bit. And it was just, just to stay long enough, just to stay long enough. And then the second two just continued to land so I put everything I could into it. And uh, so it started to finish he thought he was gonna to try to finish the fight. He thought he might have hurt me as well too when I landed that push kick and he pushed me over. He tried blitzing me and uh, kind of lost control. You know, when he, when he lost control, I just saw him keep coming. Oh, no. And uh, I knew that he drops his left hand every time he does a combo, so I knew that right hook was gonna be there. And I wasn't playing hook coming on back to back when he came, but he just kept coming. So if the, if the, if the counter's there, just keep using it. You with Dominic Cruz, obviously one in one A, is inexplicably linked to seemingly for the rest of your career. Now tonight you came out and you know I'm the best, best one, 135 pounder there ever was. Arguably had that fight that should have gone your way. But for those listening, what do you feel like establishes you as the best ahead of Dominic? Where do you think you're a step ahead in that avenue? I keep fighting. I'm not on the couch. I'm not behind the desk. Hurt. I'm out here fighting. I'm performing. I'm fighting the best in the world. Would you say that? Dillashaw slightly might have adopted a few pieces of your style without giving credit for your, without citing the source. I honestly believe these guys are my clones. I mean, you Man. watch TG, TJ, you'd assume I coached him his whole career. Yeah. And realistically, if you really break it down, I kind of did because he had to be me for all his teammates for years. But yeah. that's, so how it that's how it works. That's how it works. That's you how know, it works. We all, if you're we all bringing up the division, though, I feel like that's what a champion should do is make the people in the division better. And so I think stay relaxed. Improve. I have done more in this division than anybody. I am the best 135 pounder in this division, and I beat him. So people want to see it. I'm not taking away from TJ Dillashaw's skill set. He is one of the best in the world, period. In the division. So is Austin Sal. So is Moraes. So are all these guys. These guys are savages. I, you could go on any analytical breakdown, color commentary event, and listen to the great things I've said about these top five guys, Ariel. And so can all the fans. 
Now here's the real question. Who else can you, what other fighter can you go to and hear them saying praises about me? Nobody. And the reason is they don't want to give credit where credit is due, whereas I'm mature enough to do so. And I'm still giving credit to these guys. TJ is good. Austin Sal's good. Maurice is good. Henry Cejudo is one of the best in the world. All these guys are the best in the world. I'm just one step right there selling, and I've done a little bit more in my career early on to get this decision and to earn this position, not to mention I was on a three-year layoff, came back and beat TJ Dillshaw off the couch. What's going to happen if I'm, ste- I'm steady, I'm healthy training, I'm not off the couch, and I come back and rematch him? I'm going to beat him, and everybody knows that.